Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD and this is Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Ball Games in Bellingham, Mass. We are jumping in here with Ethan on Death and Taxes up against Nick on what he is calling EDH. It is a Maverick style build and it is very spicy. Ethan leading out with Rashad and Port into Aethervile. Nick answers in kind with a Noble Hierarch. Both decks kind of following out their ideal early game lines. Nick also playing with Birds of Paradise, so he has a whole bunch of accelerants. Green Sun Zenith for Dryad Arbor as well, really looking to go into turn number two with at least three mana. And we have a Phyrexian Revoker now, shutting off the activated ability of this Hierarch. It at least will give Exalted triggers to any other creatures. And now a Green Sun Zenith for one. Getting a Queeran Ranger. The Green Sun getting shuffled back in. A pair of Rashad and Ports. For Ethan, this could end up really restricting Nick's mana, depending on how this plays out. Rashad and Port, very different from Wasteland in that you can use it early for development and still have it around in the mid-game to mess with your opponent and then still have it later on if you need to curve out and make some more mana intensive plays, things like hard casting Batter Skull. It has not been seeing as much play in recent months. Goblins, for example, many lists now cutting Rashad in port, so the less comfortable your opponent is playing against the card, the stronger it gets. Horizon Canopy on Ethan's side as well. We'll see if he actually has any green cards to go along with that, or if it's just for the card drawing. And now Viling in Tomic. That guy's an absolute house. Be worth noting that Queeran Ranger does not target the land that it returns, so Tomic will not stop that interaction. But he will not be able to untap a Dryad Arbor with this Queeran Ranger. And now four damage coming in. Ethan with Aether Vial and three lands can do just about anything that a typical Death and Taxes list is capable of. And he's going to go ahead and cast a Sword of Fire and Ice. That card threatens to generate a massive amount of card advantage here, both drawing cards and actually destroying permanents. A lot of the time, Sword of Fire and Ice just, just does an extra two damage to the face, but here we've got creatures on board that Ethan would be very happy to get rid of. Couple of mana floating right now. Oh, and they're actually verifying Tomic. Yeah, Tomic is not going to interact in any meaningful way with the current board state. If he had a Dryad Arbor, wouldn't be able to untap it. That's probably the only likely interaction on Nick's side for him targeting his own lands. Those Horizon Lands. Very interesting deck building considerations moving forward. Oh, and now True Name Nemesis. Just not the type of card that you'd expect at a first glance. And a Sylvan Library. And a second Aether Vial on his side. So he has a Violet 1. And now a Violet 0. Those will be able to tick up and cause all sorts of problems here for Ethan. Recruiter of the Guard grabbing Flicker Wisp. And that's going to add additional air support. That sort of fire and ice. Going to be pretty happy to be carried by a guy with wings here. So the recruiter of the guard has fetched a flicker wisp. It is in his hand. He'll be able to vial it in at instant speed and blink a permanent. 
Birds of Paradise being KO'd by the two damage from the Sword of Fire and Ice. Pro Blue and Pro Red. I don't... Just a little minor misplay there, it looks like. The Sword of Fire and Ice killed the Birds of Paradise. I believe it would have been better to Swords the Birds, preventing the one life being gained. Kind of changing that. Might have been optimal. Nick in a real hole here. Facing down lethal damage, essentially. True Name will be able to prevent true lethal in all likelihood. But this is very grim. This True Name Nemesis really being outflanked. by these three soon-to-be four creatures. Flying and protection from blue from Sword of Fire and Ice makes this a long ways away from being able to block. True Name turns sideways, pushing through some damage, and now Flicker Wisp is going to go ahead and blink in Recruiter of the Guard, so prior to the end step, Flicker Wisp, that comes back, and at this point, Ethan is going to have access to a whole stream of 3-1 Flyers. The team turning sideways. Aether Vial, what can you do? Scrib Sprite. Flicker Wisp decides to get that out of the way temporarily untapping true name nemesis going to be able to do some blocking on the ground but it's still going to be nine damage down to just one a ten damage with the recruiter of the guard Not looking good here for Nick. It's conceivable he has some type of sweeper. Rashad and Port tapping down that Savannah. Will these Aether Vials pull him out of this terrible spot? Tough to imagine. Nope. And there we go with game one. So Nick forced to pass back into a lethal attack from Ethan. Going on to game number two. Nick playing on the playmat that will be awarded to our eventual champion. Every ELD open, I create a custom leather playmat, one of a kind, to immortalize the champion's victory. This upcoming weekend, if you're listening to this uh, the day it's published, actually this is probably coming out on Saturday, so that's going to be the day of our popper open. The following weekend will be a vintage open along with a Commander Day, and then the following week will be a Modern Open, and then back into Legacy and then Old School. So every weekend we got something going on here, playing for fabulous prizes, and of course the uh, one-of-a-kind playmats and pins. The pins mirror the playmats limited edition. I make those out of either wood or leather, depending on the, the tournament series. Hopefully you can make it down sometime to visit. We are in Bellingham, Mass. ELD's Time Vault Games. Man, we got some time to fill with this shuffling. Looks like Nick is really considering some options. I gotta feel like this is a matchup that should be on every player's radar. Not, of course, what Nick is playing. We don't even know the uh, the proper name here for it. He's calling it EDH. Uh, it is a Maverick-style build. I believe he's uh, largely basing it off of Fauna Shaman. And the card's capable of really pulling together quite a toolbox set of answers to many situations, but just could not answer that board state from death and taxes. Don't know if he's just bant or if he's got a black splash in there as well. Orzov Pontiff definitely can do a lot of work to all of the X1s.
death and tax is pretty well suited toward other creature decks. By no means is it a unstoppable juggernaut in creature deck matchups. Death and taxes can be an absolute uh, contender when it's playing against goblins, but it's certainly not favored. Uh, the Swords of Plowshares can do a lot of work, but other times a single piece of spot removal is simply not enough. It doesn't get double duty out of the card like the blue decks with Snapcaster Mage, so it's pretty reasonably equipped, pardon the pun, uh, once it gets cards like Umazawa's Jite and Sword of Fire and Ice and Batter Skull, uh, those can help manage the board or your life total and prevent you from getting too far behind. Even a card like True Name Nemesis, if you can get a Batter Skull gaining you life every turn, it is not going to be enough to actually win the race from the other side. So Swords of Plowshares taking out that Noble Hierarch, another Noble comes right back down. And Nick going to go ahead and fetch now. I'd imagine that's... Oh, maybe we can determine what it is. Uh, definitely taps are green, as I'd imagine everything in the deck does. Most everything. So Dryad Arbor being Green Sun Zenith off of the Mystery Land... sure if that text box kind of makes it look like a bayou or not it might be it's a non-basic it did get wastelanded so that may be enough information to go off of there and now path to exile and no basic lands to fetch queer and ranger so swordsing one creature, path to exile. It's actually going to be the better version at this point. Pithing Needle now, I'm going to be able to name Queer and Ranger. And that is really bottlenecking Nick's mana. Taking him from five mana back down to three, essentially, with this Queer and Ranger. Queer and Ranger is so good in many situations. Another thing to consider is blocking with Dryad Arbor, then returning it to hand. Of course, that play not as hot without damage on the stack from, from back in the day, but it does quite a lot to prevent life gain from things like Batter Skull. And now Leovold. One damage coming in. This Leovold's going to essentially shut off that Rashadden port on the other side of the table, giving Nick a card anytime any of his permanents are targeted. The card drawing side, not as relevant, though Horizon Canopy could create a little bit of a misplay on Ethan's side if he tries to crack it on his turn after he's already drawn a card. Most of the card advantage from Death and Taxes is actually tutoring using things like Stoneforge Mystic and Recruiter of the Guard. And now Leovold's 3-3 body crashing in there. Will Nick have an answer to the equipment? Palace Jailer coming down first. Getting rid of Leovold, making Ethan the Monarch. And now Fauna Shaman. This Fauna Shaman is going to need to be answered. You do not want a Survival of the Fittest style chain of events to happen. That Pithing Needle going to prevent Fauna Shaman from tapping and untapping as much as he'd like. Walking Ballista at 2. And it's actually just going to trade right into that Fauna Shaman. Ethan not interested in finding out all of the cool things that Nick's deck can do. No sympathy for the viewers at all. He was just looking to get out of this one as quickly as possible. You can always ask him about the list after the match. 
Mother of Runes now, and a Kasali Pride Mage. This Pride Mage could unlock the Quirin Ranger. Not the most exciting thing. Mother of Runes could really create a bit of a standstill here, but this, this Monarch element is really going to be a problem. Is Nick going to be able to connect and steal that status from Ethan and start outdrawing him two to one? That's really the big question here. Recruiter of the Guard. And that is tutoring up another creature for Ethan. Let's see what he goes for. Looks like he's considering an answer to Mother of Runes. That's going to need to be an answer to Kosali Pride Mage. Otherwise, the Pride Mage is just going to be able to kill it. And there's the Revoker. So a little unclear what that new Revoker named. Might be Mother of Runes, so it seems likely. Ooh, Relic Warden taking that Sylvan Library. Library threatened to let Nick pull back into this game, get some card advantage or at least some card selection. At this point, he's just playing off the top versus an opponent that's outdrawing him 2-1. to one. And now we've got a Rashad and Port and another Rashad and Port activation. A land for turn does nothing for Nick's cause here. Palace Jailer, just an absolute beast. Card does a lot of work. Even against decks like Sneak and Show, the ability to exile their giant creatures, very powerful. Even if they don't have a creature, getting ahead 2-1 to one in card advantage each turn, also incredible. That card doesn't get reprinted. Who knows how high it'll go. Right now it's really not very expensive, but it is tough to keep in stock. Even Miracles playing the card at one point. And now we've just got tons of mana denial attempted by Ethan, slowly chipping away at Nick's life total. He's down to 12. really considering his situation here. And I believe he has access to upwards of six mana, four lands, plus an untap, plus playing a land. And Green Sun Zenith. We'll see what this is for. Could be five or six. What kind of craziness does he have with all of this mana? I would not be surprised if it's a card that I don't recognize.
Come on, Nick. Show us something good here. Putting Birds of Paradise to the front, that is not a particularly exciting six or seven mana play. And that is the Commander card. It's it's like Nell something with a T, Tezoth, something like that. I'll see if I can find that on the Gatherer. during a lull in the action. I believe that's the one that's going to allow for recursion, either returning the creature to his hand or to the battlefield. Uh, has been played as a, a slot in Nick Fit, returning veteran explorers and really being punishing there. Uh, but we have not seen veteran explorer out of Nick so far. I don't believe we actually have black in any great abundance. We see a bayou there and just the black casting cost there. And considering how to deal with the new threat and the repeated recursion that comes along with it. Uh, you can let me know in the comments. Mana being taken down and no damage being done. If Ethan loses that Monarch status, Nick will be getting back his Leovold. And now, finally, Stoneforge Mystic adding Batter Skull. Batter Skull and this much mana creates a considerable amount of inevitability. The Vigilance effectively creating an 8 point life swing or 8 points of life gain very often both attacking and blocking more often than not just stopping your opponent from being able to even launch an attack and now we see Queer and Ranger Doing that previously alluded to play, block, and then return. These wastelands. Interestingly, being thrown at the remainder of his mana base, wasteland could have potentially been used to get rid of this dryad arbor if Nick wasn't super careful. Ethan going to be content to just tap down the mana base. Nick likely to be using this to start searching with Fauna Shaman. He does have a Dryad Arbor at least in hand. Let's see what else he has. We get a green mana thanks to Rashad and Port. And he actually doesn't end up using it. He's just going to go ahead and go to his draw step, try and draw a different creature perhaps, recognizing the value of this Dryad Arbor in complicating the combat situation. Given that Ethan is just using his Rashad and Ports on his other mana sources. Port does make, I mean, a play set of ports does make it very difficult to actually successfully use Dryad Arbor as a blocker. If Ethan really doesn't want it to happen, he has all the tools he needs to prevent it. Really, four times the, the tools necessary. Here's a Dryad Arbor. And really, just kind of a crazy game state here. And 
now the tapping begins with Rashad and Port. Marin of Clan Nell Toth. We have a 3-4. Whenever another creature you control dies, it gets an experience counters and at the beginning of your end step. You return creatures either to your hand or to the battlefield, depending on how much experience he has on him. This could get very interesting with Fauna Shaman discarding creatures. Recursion on. All sorts of potential threats. Maybe a Kasali Pride Mage. I mean, that could certainly be useful here. Batter Skull swinging in, not turning sideways. It does have Vigilance. Oh, and Nick now forced to consider untapping. And he's going to discard Containment Priest. Getting just a Birds of Paradise. And now untapping. So it looks like the block going through with the Dryad Arbor. And Nick going to start leaning very heavily on this Marin to return cards from the graveyard. His mana base under heavy attack from these four Rashadden ports. Oh, and this Caracas on the other side going to be a huge problem. Ethan can just bounce this Marin. That's exactly what happens, and now things are looking very grim. Stoneforge Mystic. Umazawa's Jite. That is getting thrown on a Palace Jailer. Okay, no, just, just onto the battlefield. Palace Jailer, not really the best thing. I mean, you might as well throw it on the, the Germ Token. That's exactly what happens. Four damage incoming, and this is the beginning of the end. These counters are going to be colorless sourced, so they can take out all of these X1s, and that is it. Nick forced to extend the hand as Stoneforge Mystic just creates a unwinnable board state there for death and taxes. That is all for this one, but don't worry. There is a lot more... Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.